Good evening, everyone. Um, I've never been in lights like this before, so um, support me as I stumble through my words. Um, like like, like um, Lord Dab said, there was there were very beautiful stories, and the stories resonated with me because I came as a 14-year-old child from Barbados, and when reading these stories, it's all about memories of that kind of journey of coming into England. <laughs> coming to England as a young child and thinking that the houses were pubs and stuff like that. So when I read those stories, and I mean, some of these people in these stories had much more difficult journeys than I did because I came by a BOAC jet and came to meet my parents. But like I said, some of them didn't even have their parents to meet them. So um, in announcing the winners, should I do this in reverse order like they do in the Academy Awards? <laughs> right. In reverse order, the third place goes to Please Question Your Misconception by Susie. In second place is Just a Little Girl in a Completely Different World by Natalia. And we were thinking that there's a gender bias in these stories. Somebody brought that out to me. I don't know how relevant that is. But the winning story is a story that resonated with me much more because the clarity of writing and the emotion that that person put into that story was awesome. And tonight's winner on the 18th award category is Changes by Erin. Your bag has to be shoved under your chair, 
when in a car to avoid people smashing the window. The best way you can describe the majority of people in care is careless and dangerous, ramping pavements and red, running red lights and roads are manic, but it's your home. It's where you learn to ride a bike, had your first crush, took your first steps, said your first words. It's home. It's where you grew up for nine years, although you have moved, it will always be your home. The mountain's worth of memories you've always you've made there will never fade away. As you gaze out the pine needle scented taxi cab, you realise that the roads are quiet, except from the engine noise. No honking, no banging of metal, just subtle engine noise. Nothing like what you're used to. There are no street vendors knocking on your window trying to convince you to buy a legal copy of a DVD. It surprises you. But you're also relieved. The lights of London illuminate your face. People wander along the city streets, window shopping in the expensive stores. It seems safe. No one is looking over their shoulder to see if anyone is following them. This confuses you, but also makes you comfortable. Your life has been full of precautions to ensure that you stay safe. This was never weird to you because it was something you did naturally. You did it every time you got in the car. You had an escape plan if anyone was ever to break into the car. If someone grabbed you, you'd need to scream. You never realised that this was a normal. You don't know what to expect when it comes to school. Things are just so different. As time has passed, you felt anxious about making new friends. As you walk into the school reception, you feel the gaze of your soon-to-be classmates. You're the new kid, the one that everyone will talk about. The one that everyone wants to know, but is too scared to talk to. A tall, smiling woman strides out of the office, and she seems to be the head teacher. She starts to talk to your parents. You don't pay attention because you're too interested in the classrooms that you can peer into from where you're standing. There are words in a different language written across the walls. A large bonjour is slapped on the front of the door. You assume it's French. The woman calls over the assistant. Can you grab Catherine? She's in 4G. She continues to talk to your parents. She's talking, to, uh, she's talking about some relatives who live in the same neighbourhood as we used to. A small girl rushes through. Her hair is just as long as yours. Her eyes seem to twinkle as she looks you up and down. Her presence lights up the room. She's a teacher's pet. The head teacher turns around and a wide grin appears on her face. This is Erin. She's joining the school today and you're going to be her buddy. She says, gesturing to you, Erin, this is Catherine. She will show you everything you need to see. A friend? Well, maybe we will be friends. A sense of reassurance. She can introduce, to more, introduce you to more people and maybe this won't be as bad as you assumed. You've always been friendly and never been afraid to put yourself out there. But after moving country and school, that sense of confidence is less than it previously was. As you wave your parents goodbye, Catherine energetically grabs your bag and rushes down the hallway. Hi, I'm Catherine, but you already know that it's nice to meet you. Her excitement confuses you. Why is she so comfortable around a person she's never met before? It's nice to meet you too, you say cautiously, knowing your accent will draw attention to yourself. As you walk through the school, you realise that the classes are very small. The whole school is very small. Your old school goes from grade triple note to matric. The oldest people you can see can't be the over can't be of the age of eleven. You're confused as to why the school is so small. There is no assembly hall, there's no outdoor swimming pool, and there's only one small field. Your accent is weird. Where are you from? She asks you with a puzzled expression. You look back at her with mixed emotions. I'm from South Africa. 